here we are with another video and in this video maybe it is easier to show what we are trying to create with the ducts first so with no special reason i'm in Revit 22 and we are creating color code for the cable trays i like to use duct and pipe legends mostly duct because i use those legends for flow and barely anyone puts flow for pipes so mostly between those two option I'm using duct legend and what I'm trying to uh, do and what I usually do with a duct legend is to check velocity and those are pretty wide range let's go with three five six I don't know eight and add one and I like to use from blue to red this color scheme some orange uh -huh. put orange slice okay something like this just to show you so essentially if you did receive the model and you want quickly to check the design you can call this legend and you can use it for a variety of uh, situations uh, but I like to use it with this. If I did perform design, I will check my design. If I received the model for someone, I will check that model with this legend. And quickly you can spot uh, some ducts which have high velocity. But over here in this Autodesk sample file, everything is in range. But I would like also to see maybe this. Uh, if you have a situation where you have a velocity less than one meter, probably in those ducts, uh, somebody did not enter the flow. So that is also a problem. But this is color coding. So you can easily color ducts or pipes or rooms or, I don't know, spaces with uh, these legends. But unfortunately, we do not have this for the cable trays. So this video and this script is I try to create something similar for the cable trays. So let's turn off this and I will show you what I created for the cable trays. So we are in, in the Autodesk sample file. They did have only one route for the cable trays. I did duplicate it and offset it a little bit, change some dimensions some height just to have better example overall and uh, let's call dynamo player here is dynamo player so uh, this is user interface so i did choose a couple of parameters which i think that are most important for the cable tray so for example let's start with the type and uh, let's at first just explain user interface so you can color code by type or by elevation. I'm using bottom elevation or service type size, width and height of the cable tray. Uh, when the parameter is string, when parameter is text like type, uh, you cannot select this next drop-down list because over here, for example, with elevation. Now, if you want to color code each and every cable tray in your project, it can happen that you have like 36 different elevations so in order to avoid that in order to avoid to have 36 colors uh, over here i did uh, show some rounding factors so i i, I did mostly hard coded this for the metric it can be adjusted for the imperial system but for example uh, if you just want to see what you have in one two three four meters you can go with this is 1000 millimeters or one meter but you can also use different round factors uh, for, for width probably you will go with 50 so to see 150 200 250 300 and so on but when the parameter is text uh, then you cannot select this drop down list and i will show you this later so the script from one side it needs to color code our cable trace but in order to have that legend where you can see the value for the color we will create a drafting view 
and for that drafting you we want to create some legend to tell you what are you looking and for the context now uh, this basically user interface read all the text types that you have in the model so you can select different text types uh, so okay let's do it just for the types and let's use the same font uh, the best look that i have it's when, when i'm using the same font so okay now we have uh, i would say three colors that is okay now in order to see uh, which color corresponds to which value so now uh, you can do this in a couple of different ways i choose to do it like this so the blue is for the leather uh, this cyan cyan it's for single rail and uh, this example doesn't have any meaningful design uh, let's say i just create some cable trace in order to play in order to show you how the script works this is not real design and just forget that uh, you are seeing some meaningful design over here and this let's call it orange is uh, for solid bottom so let's let's check that if that is correct so when i click on this it is a solid bottom this is a leather cable tray and this is single rail so that is okay now uh, if you want to use some different color coding you can immediately just call again script and it will uh, change the colors but if you want to continue whatever you did work before you can just reset uh, this color and it will be whatever it's previously if you did create some filter it will go back to that filter if you i don't know if you have some rule with uh, visual uh, uh, visibility graphics uh, cable trace let's say that we had but it's uh, this will not change but then it's solid let's say So this will change the color. So let's do something else. Service type, for example. So now this changed the look of uh, cable tray by the service type. Let's see for the service type. Now not this. So we have mixed power telecom and blank. We have also the value if somebody did not fill the service type. Uh, orange is for telecom. Let's move this over here. Um, blue is for mix use. And this is for power. Over here it's power. And now what they're trying to say now, if you if you reset colors, it will go back to being all blue. If you set it like, like that. Uh, what is also good um, for uh, for floor plans, when you wanted to use duct and pipe legend, you would use that but if you go to the 3d view over here i did create some filter to show you the, the exactly the same so if you have filter that uh, color cable tray i think by service type yeah service type power so now even in 3d view you can also color code uh, cable trays and again if you reset it it will go back to the filter value so if we color code over here but by elevation for example and let's go with let's go with 100 to see uh, 2000 i don't know 800 900 3000 and so on so let's just see what we have so we have how much of this we have six lines six values okay so if we now Divide it over here so very blue, it's two and a half thousand. Um, have small variation in blue. Now it can be that one cable tray, it's this value over here. I cannot find it. Ah, this by 45 angle, okay. Uh, almost all are 2700, and because this rounds the value. In order to avoid to have this six two six five six seven so on, so it rounds the value. So when you click on the cable trim, it might not be the exact value, but it will be closer to that color. 
then to green are this one. Okay, then we have orange, 3000 and 3200 for those. And again, if you reset now the color, it will get back to uh, this filter which we did have before that. Uh, we can also color code by By remaining parameters, what I missed elevation series type size. That is again a string parameter because the size value is something by something else. So this is a string, this is not a number. 300, 200. So this is 300, this is 200, and blue is 150. And Okay, for height, I think that the height of the cable tray it is same. So we have okay for height only one value. So it is seventy five. It's one value. This is strange. Okay. So again, if you reset it, it will go back to the filter, and that is like. It for the script now just to check dynamo I will not go too deep because I didn't use any custom package everything is uh, basically in the Python if I didn't have the native node for what I needed so let's run for for elevation for example elevation round Let's use something else, 500, for example. And what we want to list, we want to list all text types that we have in the model. Uh, for the cable trace, we want to find all the values for the type, for, I don't know, uh, elevation, for service type, for width, height, size, and so on and so on. And we want to fill that data to the user interface. Uh, user interface will show that the user selected elevation to round in 500 and some fonts. Okay, transpose and now just select which information you need and deliver it to the next nodes. Uh, now, uh, there is a logic and you see it in the user interface. If it's a number, we can round it. Uh, if it's a text, we just need to continue. But if we need to round uh, those numbers we want to see first if we have metric or imperial because uh, it doesn't matter that we have our values in millimeters in the model everything is in feet in dynamo so we want to multiply with 304.8 and also to round it and we want to search for unique values and we want to group the elements by those unique values and we have now a couple of if else nodes just to see if we want to proceed with string or numbers maybe i did over it over here you can optimize it but for me it's just to have a functionality and to to proceed now for the color this was a big challenge so you need to create some kind of logic that will create those colors i, I like to have it from cold to hot so from blue to red but now if you have 10 colors, you need some 10 variations. If you have two colors, you need two variations and so on. And we are creating these colors by I don't know, alpha, red, green, blue, and the, using this native node to convert those values to the actual colors. Uh, and we are using this node to override in the view. Uh, and the over, override in the view, it's basically the highest level of coloring the elements. And when you cancel and you reset this overriding view, that is why it will go back to the previous level that you have for the colors. Okay. Uh, for the drafting views, we want to create drafting views that will will have a name color code by, and then we want to read the parameter. So over here, in this case. We will have drafting view the color code by elevation, uh, drafting view by name. We will create that drafting view. Uh, 
uh, next nodes are using just the name from the drafting view. So now we need to have a name. This will happen in a situation where you already have the same name. Then because then we need to create again the view with the same name to also add GUID over here. Mm, maybe it can be done differently. Uh, legend for color. Again, this is now you have that text, the drafting view that you want to show to the user. Mm. This and also over here. And now, uh, what? Why I did say that you have the best uh, case when you're using the same font because over here, if you did set I don't know, five mm five millimeters, then you will also need to develop some logic that will adjust the space between those texts because like this, it is looking very weird. This script will not maybe work for all situations in all, all cases. Sometimes some things I did, let's say hard coded, like lines, for example, I, I say I want to start from zero. I want to have the lines, I think with 800 millimeters, then I want to have 150 millimeters of space, then I want to have a text. So in some other case with some other font, maybe it will not look perfect, but you can adjust the script. Uh, metric and imperial conversion rate. So I think this is for the points. Yeah, in order to tell to Dynamo where we want to uh, have that content text. We need to find the points, and again, because everything is by default in the imperial system, we need to convert that to the metric, find by coordinates, and now again, this is a text for that legend, let's say, and this is a text for the content, for this over here. And that is it, basically. We did color the elements, we did create a legend, or drafting you with a legend, and that is it, and the reset. Reset script, it's only one node that will use active view. So it will use active view and cable trace, um, and it will just uh, reset graphic override. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.